our mind and make us Lord see your will for our lives may we learn some lessons that we can apply in our lives for the passage read today and I pray Lord that our lives will be glorifying to your name help me Lord as I preach because there's nothing in me that can be a blessing to your people but if we will focus on Jesus then all of us will be blessed today in Jesus name I pray amen you may be seated thank you very much so the title of our message is blessing in believing blessing in believing so this uh, particular passage is very common very familiar because I believe that we have heard many preachings regarding the widow of Zarephath and what uh, the Lord did to her life through the prophet Elijah and the circumstances behind the life of this widow woman so in this passage we see that she was blessed by believing so that is in the economy of God that when we believe then God can bless us I'm not talking about monetary blessing but I'm talking about blessing in general there will, will be physical blessing there will be emotional blessing there will be intellectual blessing and most of all there will be spiritual blessing when we believe in God amen so in this particular instance we can see that the blessing comes in the form of food and in the form of the life of her son being gi given back to her but then we can see that as I have said in our believing then God will be releasing his blessing because the Bible says that without faith it is impossible to please God but if there is faith then God will be pleased and when God is pleased then he will move in order to bless each and every every one of us so let us look at the passage that we have read and let us look at the things surrounding this uh, particular event if we will look at the background we will see from verses uh, 1 to 7 something that we have not read uh, because uh, the uh, king King Ahab rejected the man of God he rejected the Word of God and he rejected the law of God God pronounced a curse in the nation of Israel because of him through the prophet Elijah so there was a pronouncement that it's not going to rain there's going to be a great dirt in that place and there's going to be a great famine that will affect much of the people living in those particular area so we can see that if the uh, leadership of a country will reject God will reject the Word of God and will reject the man of God nothing good can happen amen so if we will look at what is happening in our time today they are now legalizing and some in other places same-sex marriage is already legal marijuana is legal abortion is legal and even aiding people to commit suicide is co is being considered legal in other places so we can see that our our world is turning from bad to worse why because the leadership of a country can affect how God treat that particular country amen so you will see in the history of Israel when there is a good king there is a blessing in Israel but when there is a bad king there will be curses in Israel when the people of Israel repent then God will forgive them and bless them but if they will go to idolatry then God will curse them and God will remove the blessing from them so we can see here the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy where the Bible says that time will come when men will call good evil and evil good if you are right today you are evil if you are wrong then you are good before if you oppose abortion then you are good but now you are bad before if you oppose LGBT community you are good but now you are evil before if you uphold what is right uphold the Word of God then you are considered good but now when you preach the Word of God you are considered evil intolerant and a hateful person so we can see that the world has turned upside down why because they reject God they reject the Word of God and they reject the man of God and as I have said nothing good can come out of rejecting God in your life 
In this particular passage, when God pronounced curse to Israel, it affects even the uh, adjoining nations. Like Sidon, where Saripat is located. We can see that in all of this uh, curse or famine, there was a particular person that was affected, and that is the widow of Saraphat. Actually, God can use anybody, anything, in order to fulfill His will in the life of a person. Sometimes, even in crisis, we can see the goodness of God. Sometimes, in the midst of our problems, we can see the hands of God. Because the Bible says that the goodness of God leads us to repentance, and sometimes God will use evil, not moral evil, but natural evil in order for our eyes to turn unto Jesus. Because sometimes we are so self-sufficient that we think we can solve everything, but when we come to the end of ourselves, that's the only time that we will realize that God is more powerful than us. That only God is actually the person that we can trust in our lives. So when God pronounced this particular curse over Israel, He immediately asked Elijah to hide himself. Not because Elijah is fearful, but because God wanted his curse to sink in into the life of King Ahab for him to realize, repent so that God can bless Israel. But you know, in the life of Ahab, there is an evil woman. And this evil woman kept Ahab from repenting. Ahab is not really uh, that bad of a king, but because of the influence of Je Jezebel, he actually sink into the bottom of uh, what you call morality in his life. Jezebel is actually the one running the show. It is not even King Ahab. If you remember, when King Ahab wanted a, uh, a garden, and because he couldn't get it, Jezebel suggested to King Ahab that he do everything because he's king. And it cost the life of the owner, Naboth, the owner of that uh, garden, so that uh, Ahab can get that garden. So it was the manipulation of Jezebel that caused all of these things. And then slowly but surely, because Jezebel was a pagan queen, slowly but surely, he manipulated Ahab to legalize the worship of Baal in Israel. And that got the ire of God. God hates idolatry. The Bible says, God says in the Bible, there is only one God. And thou shalt not worship any other gods. And this is exactly what is happening in the life of the Israelites. Very few prophets are in Israel at this time, and they are hiding in a cave. But the prophets of Baal, numbering 450, and the priests numbering 400, 850 of them, are the ones running the show, the religious show over there in Israel. And hence, God has to step in and judge because judgment is God's goodness towards those who are committing sin in their lives. So God has to step in. Elijah uh, delivered the uh, word of God, the curse of God, and then he hid by the brook chariot. And God said, don't worry, Elijah. I have commanded the ravens. To feed thee there. You see, wherever God leads, He provides. Even in the most mysterious ways. Even in the most uncanny way. Even in the most unexpected way. He will use something, somebody, in order to preserve the people that He placed there. That is why if God wants you there, don't worry. God's supply will be there. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter where God will place you. That is a place where the blessing of God will be. It may be in the midst of the desert, but God can bring springs of water in that desert if God leads you there. Amen? So he said, go there. You will be fed and you will drink of the brook. And then after a while, because there was no rain, the brook dried up. And because Elijah could not drink anymore, for there is no water, he was now directed to go to Zarephath. And God said in Zarephath, 
I am going to use a widow woman in order to sustain you. You see, God uses the base things of the world in order to confound the wise. He will use those weak vessels in order to make those vessels who might think that they are strong, that with God, nothing is impossible. God can use a nobody in order to confound a somebody. God can use an unknown in order to put to shame those people who think that they are known. So he said, go there, and I have commanded a widow woman to sustain thee in that place. So Elijah obeyed God, and he traveled going to Sarifat. And when he got there, he saw this woman picking up sticks. This woman was so poor that she did not even have what you call a something to cook with. So she's just, she's just outside gathering a stick and then Elijah saw him and Elijah started a conversation with her. And after that, Elijah delivered the message that God wanted her to hear but in a way of commanding the widow woman to do something against her circumstances. You see, sometimes God will ask you to do something that might seem against you. It might seem that you are going to be at a disadvantage, but God is only using that circumstance in order to test your faith. That is why we are going through so many things that we really cannot comprehend in our lives. But if we will act in faith, then God will reveal His will to us. Sometimes you will lose a job. Sometimes you will be relocated. Sometimes this will happen to you. Sometimes a person may trust your faith in the Lord. But in everything that will happen in our lives, let us know the will of God and continue in the will of God. And once we do this with faith, then God can bless us. So let us look at the uh, circumstance of this woman and see what went on in her life regarding sustaining Elijah and receiving the blessing from God. But first, a word of caution. This particular passage has been used so many times in our time today in order to make people understand, members of a church understand, that they need to put the man of God first before everything. They said that if the pastor will go to your house, you serve him. Even if it is the last food that you may have. That's why there is a joke in the Philippines when, you know, the man of God is eating. And then the children are looking. And then they said he already turned the fish to the other side. Nay, tay, binaliktad na po ni pastor yung isda. Mukha hong wala nang matitira. And then the pastor will say, You first serve the man of God, and then God will supply your needs. I don't think that there will be fish after the man of God consume everything in our day today. Remember, this is a particular, a specific, special circumstance where God is going to use a miracle in order to make a widow woman, an unbeliever, to believe in God. Amen? And to sustain his prophet in order for lost people to see the power of God in their lives. A pastor cannot claim this today, but there are lessons that we can learn here. You see, like for example, how cruel can a pastor be to say that, well, if that is your last meal, give it to me. I don't care if your son will not eat. That is so cruel. Actually, if, if you have a member with that situation, you need to go there bringing some groceries for them. Instead of getting what was left for them. And then after eating it, there will be nothing on top of their table. But this is a special circumstance. This is not the norm. This is just an exemption. And there are lessons that we can see here regarding faith. 
So, when Elijah met this woman, she was challenged to receive the man of God. She was challenged to receive the word of God. And she was challenged to receive the power of God. Why? Because God is always looking for people to believe in Him. In John chapter 4, He said, God is looking for people to worship Him in spirit and in truth. The Bible says that the eyes of the Lord go to and fro, looking for a man who will stand in the gap, and He found none. God is constantly seeking for people whose heart believes in the Lord. Amen. And sometimes it is so sad that God will seek such a person in the church where people are supposed to always worship God in spirit and in truth and to serve God with all, with all of their hearts. Amen. So that is the constant desire of God. Number one, we can see here that the challenge posed to that woman was a costly challenge. It was a costly challenge. Why? Because a widow such as her is primarily dependent only on charity. During those times, if you're a widow, you cannot work. There is no work available for you. So you only live of, of charity. If you have some relatives, they can give you something. If you have children, they can work and give you something. But you cannot go out and work like what is happening today. So if you're a widow, you are only at the mercy of other people. And yet, in spite of her condition, she was the one God chooses to take care of his prophet. That's why as I have said, this is only a special circumstance. What the day demands. What God wanted to happen during that time in order to deliver his message. So he, she was the one chosen by God. You see, God tries our faith that we might try his faithfulness. If we are faithful to God, then God is faithful to us. And sometimes, even though we are not faithful, God is always faithful because that is the character of God. You may believe God, good, he will be faithful. You may not believe God. He is still faithful. The Bible says he cannot deny himself. So we can see here an example of a great faith. A widow of Sidon who is non-Jewish, who has nothing to do with the God of Israel and yet believe the word of God. So you will see that there are Gentiles who believe God before. And the good thing is this. Such faith, great faith, were actually uh, displayed by Gentiles than people of Israel. And that is something that is ironic. Uh, there was an old preacher who once offered a prayer like this. He said, Lord, help us to trust thee with our souls. And the people says, Amen. He says, Lord, Help us to trust thee with our bodies. And the people say, Amen. And he said, Lord, help us to trust thee with our money. And when he looked up, nobody's there anymore. They all went home. You know why? Because sometimes we can do away with what we think is not actually important and hold on to those things that we think are important. But ironically, we are more important than the money that we have in our lives. Amen? That is why we must not be stingy when it comes to God. We must be ready if asked to, or if need be, to sacrifice for the cause of God. I am going to say this again. It is not something that is a norm. It only happens on special occasions. You see, in our church, we do not have too many sacrificial offerings. When was the last time that we took up a sacrificial offering? Do you remember? I can't even remember. Why? Because we don't usually do that. We will do it if there is a special circumstance. We will do it if there is a need that must be fulfilled. But sad to say, in so many churches, sacrificial giving is every week. Special offering happens every week. 
It is as if you are only working for the need of the church where the truth of the matter is you must be uh, you, you must practice fidelity in many areas of your life that there are needs like yourself, your family, and other things where you, God made you a steward of. But when it comes to this particular instance, every steward must be ready to give something special to God. Amen? This is now the time when, do you remember when David asked for the... Uh, uh, Garden of Aruna because he is going to use it in order to build an altar and it was a threshing floor for Aruna and then David said uh, Aruna said whatever may please the king I will give it to you for free and then David said no I'm going to pay it for a price because I'm not going to give God anything that will cost me nothing and that is how we need to give to God that is how we need to give to God. When special circumstances demand. It is not a norm. I will repeat it. It is not a norm. It is a need that happened in that time and in that particular place. But David did not ask for all of the gardens of all the people in Israel. You see, if you do not really understand the Bible or study the Bible, you will make special circumstances as something that is common normal and natural and that is the reason why people are being burdened like this widow woman unnecessarily because we do not understand how to apply the word of God so she was called upon to put God before her own needs and the needs of her own family you see if you will put God first then God will take care of the rest. Give your best to God and He will take care of the rest in your life. When we have done what we can, God will do what we can't. If we have done what we can, then God will do what we can't. So unless we do our best, then God is not going to come to our rescue. So, a faith that does not move in action is a dead faith. So, don't tell me that you have faith, but not, you will not do anything to prove that faith, then that faith is a false faith. It is not a faith at all. So, it was a costly challenge because it requires all of her to be given to God, actually to the man of God. It was a courageous challenge. Why was it a courageous challenge? As I've said a while ago, she was a non-Jewish widow. And he will honor a prophet who is a Jew. You see, non-Jewish, they hate Jew. And Jews, they look at non-Jewish as dogs. So there is animosity. There is a great hostility between these two. So, those who will come from the Jewish nation are not welcome to the pagan nation. And the pagan people are not welcome to the Jewish people. And yet, God asked a non-Jewish widow to honor a Jewish prophet. Just imagine the buzz that is going around. Not only that. Not only that, he, that she will feed Elijah, but she will stay in the house of Elijah. That alone can cause a lot of problem. But she was courageous and chooses to obey God rather than man. Amen? So that is the application of Acts. Actually, uh, chapter 5, if I'm not mistaken. That she chooses to obey God rather than man or whatever man may tell him. Look at Luke chapter 4, verses 24 to 26. Luke 4, 24 to 26. And he said, Very I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. You see, Elijah is in hiding at this time. But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias. This is time. This day. There are many widows in Israel. So God can choose any widow in Israel in order to feed Elijah. And that would be proper. 
Because Elijah was a Jewish prophet, a prophet of God, so he needed to minister to the people of God. But the Bible says, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elias when the heaven was shut up. Three years and six months when great famine was throughout all the land. Verse 26. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta or Sarepa, the other name of Sarepa, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. Do you know why? Because there is unbelief in Israel and God will not work any miracle because of unbelief. So why will God waste his time if you will not believe? Why will God use you if you're not going to believe God? You see, if you reject God, God can use anybody who is willing to believe in Him. It doesn't matter if it does not belong to the country of Israel. You see, when Israel rejected God, according to Romans 9 to 11, there was set aside, blind and dispart, in part, happened to them. And God chose a nation that is not His nation, the church, in order to carry out the will of God in the world. So unbelief will, will cause God not to move or work something in your life. As I have said, it was a courageous challenge because she endured the mockings of the people around her by accepting a Jewish prophet. You live to please God and to obey God, not men. You know, most of the time our decision is based on what will people say against me. What will people say about me? What will my children think? What will my parents think? What will my wife think? What will my husband think? What will the people say? Ladies and gentlemen, when you serve God, you think what God will say, not what people will say. Amen. Why? At the end of the day, you will stand before the judgment seat of Christ and your works will be judged. According to how God wanted you to serve Him or work for Him. We are not going to give an account to people, but we will give an accounting to God. So be courageous. If you know it is the will of God, it doesn't matter who you go against as long as you go with God. That is what is important. So it was a courageous challenge. But then... The good thing is this. She responded with a great commitment. She responded with a great commitment. What kind of commitment? She made a decisive commitment. This woman gave her all without asking where his next meal would come from. Amen? She gave it. Decisive. No hesitation. No uh, thinking twice. It's the word of God. It is right. I'll do it. Without any hesitation. You see, when we commit to God, our commitment must be decisive. We must be holy, trusting God. Hindi yung kaya kang baguhin kaya ang baguhin ito decision mo kaya ang baguhin nun ang decision mo kaya ang baguhin ang problema decision mo kaya ang baguhin ang taong yun ang decision mo sa Diyos pag may decision ka sa Diyos kahit sino wala makapagbabago Amen. you must holy holy trusting God you must give everything you got your faith your personal faith must be used in order to serve your personal God you see faith it's like a toothbrush. You use your own. Do not use the faith of others. Amen? Ang kinausap nga ng Diyos, ikaw eh. So yung faith mo, gamitin mo. Wag ko meron ng faith sa iba. Parang toothbrush yan. Wag mong gamitin toothbrush ng iba. Mag-asawa nga, hindi nagagamitan ng toothbrush eh. Kaya nagagamitan kayong toothbrush? Sabi ni Maribel, oo. Ano tapat ba sa ginamit mo? Malay ko, kako. Oh, sabi ko si Helen mo, pag ginahalik ka ngayon, laway ko, nabupunta sa iyo, kako. Pero din yun. Pero maselan tayo, amen? So you use your own faith. The widow of Saripat had personal faith in what God had said 
So she doesn't care what people will say. She will serve God according to the word of God and according to the will of God. Remember, she was right in the middle of Baal's territory. The territory of the enemy. But she claimed the promise of God. Look at Psalms chapter 23. The Lord, amen, is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Amen? He is in the midst of the, she is in the, midst of the territory of the enemies, and yet God sustained her and prepared a table for her in the midst of her enemies. Amen? You see, God can do the impossible. God can do the improbable. There is nothing that is impossible with God. Yes, it's impossible for, if we will just look at it on face value, it is impossible for uh, David to beat Goliath, but God did it. God caused it to happen. Why? Because faith hears the inaudible, faith sees the invisible, faith believes the incredible, and receives the impossible. If you have faith in God, then nothing will be impossible with you Amen. and for you. Because your faith will do what God can do. Because your faith, the object of your faith is the power of God. So it was a decisive commitment. Not only that it was a decisive commitment, but it was a daily commitment. You see, when Elijah asked her to make or bake a cake for him before her family, when she obeyed, the next time that she will take flour, there will be flour. And there will be oil. But it happened on a daily basis. It's not that the container all of a sudden became filled with flour and the cruise filled with oil. It's still empty if you will look at it. But whenever she takes something out of it, there will be the supply. Daily commitment. Why? Because God wants us to trust Him on a daily basis. That's why when the, the apostles asked Him to teach them to pray, He says, Give us our daily bread so that tomorrow you will talk to God and the following day you will talk to God and the following day you will trust God and trust God and trust God daily for the supply. So our dependence will be in God daily. Kaya ngayon iba sabi niya, unahin mo Diyos at bubuo sa iyo yung talagang pagpapalang wala nang lalagyan. Mali. Ang pagpapala ng Diyos araw-araw na ibinibigay sa atin. Ba, nasa malakay yan, nahudyo ka ba? Hindi ka naman hudyo. So, it was a daily commitment so that we will always depend on the blesser, not the blessing. We will depend on the source, not the supply, and we will use the fishing hook, not only look at the fish. Because those things can give what we need on a daily basis. His, her faith in God is full-time because part-time faith is like a part-time job. It will not support you. It will never be enough. But when you put your faith wholly to God, then God will use it to supply all of your need. Faith is not like a gasoline that runs out as you use it. It is like a muscle that builds up when you use it. Yun yung faith. Huwag ka magkalalang gamitin, hindi mauubos. Sabi niya, dahan-dahan lang ang gamit ng faith, baka maubusan ka. Hindi. 
When you use faith, you exercise it and it will grow. By the grace of God. So because she had faith in God on a daily basis, her faith grew. By the grace of God. So it was what? A decisive commitment. It was a what? A daily commitment. But then, it was also a deep commitment. If you will give God all He has, you will receive all His promises. That's the key. Obey God. And His promise will happen in your life. Remember, blessing, most of the time, are what we call conditional on our obedience. Most people wanted the blessing without the obedience part. Lord, give me. God said, worship me. No, Lord, just give me. No need to worship you. Because my worshiping you will not increase your being a God or decrease you being a God. So I just supply what I need. No. God says, obey. And I am going to bless you with my promise. You see, some people feel their faith is strong enough to take them to heaven. But it's not strong enough to take them to church. That's the sad thing. That's why there are so many professing people who are not actually saved. This passage of scripture moves me or us should move us to examine our unbelief in God. We may say that we are a believer, but in our lives there are so many instances where we actually do not believe God. Sometimes even on a daily basis. And sometimes we believe God according to how we wanted to believe God, not according to the word of God. You see, there are so many things that we do not understand, and yet, we do not want to commit things to God. You see, I do not believe that we are going to make God do anything against His will. God will only do things according to the will of God. So don't ever ask God to do something that is not according to His person. Hindi ho tayo, kaya, kaya we need to know the Word of God. We need to understand the Word of God. And we need to put our faith in the Word of God. Because God will only do the things that He promised and God will never work in the life of a person if there is unbelief in the life of that person. So do not be afraid to believe God to do more than you can ask or think because that is the character of God. And don't be afraid to trust God to do the impossible. You see what happened when, when uh, these things uh, happened in the life of that widow woman? If you're going to look at before we end, uh, her faith is already increasing. But once your faith is increasing, another test will come which is even greater than what you have experienced. Why? Because God will always test the genuineness of our faith. All of a sudden, her son died. The supply is there. But the son did not die of hunger, which the woman actually accepted before. She said, we will eat, and then we will die. And that is okay with me. Because there is no supply. We know that. And I will die, and he will die, because... There is nothing. So she is okay with it. But the supply came. There was food every day. And then all of a sudden, for any unexplained reason, the son died. And he, he said, Did you come to, to remind me of my sin? You see, after this, uh, it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick and his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. He died suddenly. Look at verse 18. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee? O thou man of God, art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? Are you trying to make me remember that I worship an idol? Are you trying to make me remember that I live with the people who do not believe in God and you came here to make me remember my sin and then you punish me by slaying my son? That you killed my son? Of course, he's not, she's not actually uh, uh, making a, a pointing her fingers at Elijah but sometimes because of the gravity of the situation, we become out of sync or irrational. Because if the purpose of Elijah is to slay his son in the first place, there should be no supply. 
but there was a supply. But as I have said, when you commit to God, He will test your commitment. He will use circumstances. He will use people to see if you will stand on that commitment. Diba, mga kapatid? Sabi mo, manunumbalik na ako sa Diyos. Biglang meron nangyari. Ano, ayoko na sa Diyos uli. Oh, see? Kasi, nag- nagbigay ka ng commitment, nag-pronounce ka eh. O minsan, narinig ng jablo yan, pinaintulutan ng Diyos ang jablo, tuksuin ka eh. Pagkatapos ayun, bagsak. You see, there was another test. Whatever you say, whenever you say something and promise something to God, it will be tested. It happened to Job. It happens to the best of them. And then, the son died. Look at verse 19. And he said unto her, Give me thy son. He says, sometimes the man of God or the prophet of God are like this. Give me thy son. Namatay ka na. Parang wala nangyari. Diba? You see, if you're a man of God, you, you, you try to, to project your faith in God in whatever situation there is. Whatever circumstance. I remember when my grandmother died, I was so sad and panicky that I ran to my pastor and I wake my pastor up. Uh, I think that's about 2 o'clock in the morning and I said, Pastor, my, pastor, my, my grandmother died. And you know, I love my grandmother. I was taken care of by my grandmother and then my pastor very calmly talked to me and he said, Joel, stop crying. You go back there and try to arrange everything and then we will go in the morning and we will have a service for your grandmother. Show them that you have hope in you. You see? So I went there, stop crying. And I try to, to make things in order. Why? Because he said, you have God, you have faith, you have hope. And you believe that your grandmother got saved. So what's your problem? Yes, you may be sad for a while. Because she was taken away from you. But then she's in a place where one day you're going to meet her again. And you're going to have a grand reunion. So he said, your son died, give it to me. That's not even a problem. And then he took that boy up where he is living in a loft. So may parang balcony yung bahay. He went up, lay the boy there and said, Lord, what am I going to do with this dead boy? So he wanted that boy to come to life again. Why? Because Elijah knew that faith is at stake. Because Elijah knew that something great is at stake. And ladies and gentlemen, if something great is at stake, do not hesitate. Believe God. Keep on doing it. And God will give you the right answer. That's why you will notice what happened in verse number 21. And he stretched himself upon the child three times. Not only one time. Para bang sinisipiar mo. Hindi nagkamalay. Inulit mo pa. Inulit mo pa. Why? Because you're expecting something. You're expecting, Elijah's expecting that God will answer his prayer. Three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. This also proves that there is a soul and the soul lives forever. Umalis lang yun, yun ang death. Separation of the soul from the body. But the soul remains forever. And then he said, let the soul of this child Go back to him. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. And the soul of the child came unto him again. And he revived. Look at verse number 23. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See? Why? Amen. Thy son liveth. Ha! Habi siguro ni Elijah kung mayabang yan, no? Matay lang pa, iyak-iyak ka. O yan buhay, kanya, di ba? At then the more result. Look at verse number 24. And the woman said to Elijah, Now, by this I know that thou art a man of God. She knew that before. That's why she obeyed Elijah. That's why she baked cake for Elijah. That is why she allowed Elijah to stay at her house. She already knew that Elijah was a man of God. 
but the devil will stop fighting and doubt will be brought into our mind and when we doubted it will affect our faith but then her belief was affirmed now at this time she will never doubt God again Amen. you see I doubted my salvation one time then I ascertained it and I never doubt my salvation again I doubted the power of God once but then I saw his power in my life and I will never doubt the power of God again it is okay to doubt but be sure to ascertain and once you ascertain never doubt again and the rest is history God did his work in the life of Israel Elijah went back there was a battle and then there was this rain and then people glorified God why do not be afraid to trust God to do the impossible God can shut the heaven the heavens and God can open the heavens and God can do something in your life believe God never put a question mark where God put a period don't doubt the word of God you see man may say seeing is believing God says believing is seeing the word says show me and I will believe Christ says believe me and I will show you that is what our faith can do this woman found out that God could provide her with what the world around her could not you see do not try to find satisfaction in this world you remember the song the world may try to satisfy all that longing in your soul you may search the wide world or but you'll be just as before you'll never find true satisfaction until you found the Lord for only Jesus can satisfy your soul so question are you ready to trust God fully holy in your life if there is a lesson that we can learn today if you will trust God and believe there is blessing in believing shall we stand up please Every head's bowed.